there are always a few stars in any cluster that are actually variable, and so you'll see a few stars have got brighter or fainter between the two images. Cosmology is the study of the universe's fundamental questions, like its size, origins, and governing laws. It's a field that can humble even the most self-centered people and inspire transformations from nihilism to humanism. Lately, cosmology faces a significant challenge, the Hubble tension often seen as a crisis in the field. Much like any active research period, it's full of constant developments and new data. However, based on current information, something seems to be wrong. In this episode, we'll explore this crisis without sensationalism to understand its implications objectively. This is a reveal the mystery. If you are curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. The distance ladder. To determine the age of the universe, we must calculate the Hubble constant, a unit of measurement describing the universe's expansion in kilometers per second per megaparsec. Despite its initial complexity, this concept becomes simpler to grasp. Essentially, if we can measure both the distance to a star and its velocity, we can deduce the time it took to reach its current location. Consider it akin to figuring out the travel time of a car moving away from you at 60 miles per hour when it's 60 miles away. This approach scales up considerably when applied to celestial objects, and it gets more intricate due to the universe's expanding nature. The Hubble constant's expression in kilometers per second per megaparsec stems from the universe's acceleration in its expansion. As objects move farther from us, they recede more rapidly, adding a layer of complexity. So how do we actually measure the distances to these celestial objects? This is where the distance ladder comes into play, a series of observations and calculations that progressively measure distances to more remote objects. It all starts within our local universe, referring to objects in the Milky Way. Imagine holding your finger in front of your face and observing how it appears to shift when you close one eye and then the other. This optical phenomenon is called parallax and arises from the differing viewpoints of your two eyes. Objects closer to your face exhibit more noticeable shifts. Using the same principle, we can measure distances between Earth and objects in the Milky Way by observing the apparent displacement from opposite sides of Earth's orbit around the Sun, a span of around 300 million kilometers. This shift enables us to calculate the distance. But as we move beyond our galaxy, we require a different method. Cepheid variables, a specific type of pulsating star, come into play. In 1908, American astronomer Henrietta Leavitt discovered a direct relationship between a Cepheid's brightness and its pulsation rate. This relationship allowed us to measure the apparent brightness and pulsation period of distant Cepheids. By comparing these values, we could determine their actual brightness and consequently calculate their distance. This made Cepheids exceptionally valuable as standard candles for measuring distances to faraway stars. Let's discuss the use of standard candles, particularly Cepheid stars and Type 1a supernovas, in measuring cosmic distances. Standard candles have known luminosities, but scientists needed to establish a numerical foundation using parallax measurements of nearby Cepheid stars. Cepheids have limitations in measuring vast distances. To overcome this, Type 1. A supernovas were introduced as they should have consistent peak brightness levels, but challenges arose due to limited observations of these events up close. The solution involved identifying galaxies where Type 1a supernovas occurred and simultaneously contained cepheids, using the earlier established method to calculate the galaxy's distance. With this distance in hand, scientists could leverage the apparent luminosity of the supernova and the actual luminosity to determine the supernova's distance. Due to the extraordinary brightness of these supernovas, this approach enabled distance measurements up to a billion light years away. The first widely accepted measurement using this methodology was achieved in 2001, when the Hubble constant was determined to be 72, with a margin of error of approximately 8. Subsequently, over the past two decades, distance measurements have significantly improved in precision. 
In February 2022, the latest calculations using the distance ladder yielded a Hubble constant of 73.4, with a very narrow margin of error, indicating a more accurate and refined estimate. Imagine the cosmic microwave background CMB as the very first light in the universe. It came into being when the universe was about 370,000 years old. Before that, the universe was incredibly hot, too hot for atoms to exist. It was like a hazy, unclear space. As the universe cooled down, the first hydrogen and helium atoms formed, and it became clear like a window opening to let light through. We can only see the CMB in long radio wavelengths of light coming from all directions. At first, it seemed to have the same temperature everywhere, just a bit under 3 Kelvin. However, with better tools, we now see that it has some variations. Some parts are colder, shown in darker blue, and some are hotter, in red. The colder areas had more atoms, and they led to the creation of the first stars. Think of the CMB as a 13.7 billion year old plan for building the entire universe. It's amazing that we can even detect and understand this plan. The temperature differences between the coldest and hottest parts are incredibly small, only 0.0002 degrees Celsius. Scientists employ six parameters to describe the universe, encompassing regular matter, dark matter, dark energy, its shape, structure, and growth rate. When comparing cosmic microwave background, CMB data to our finest model, it aligns nearly perfectly. While we possess data for five factors, we utilize this knowledge to ascertain the Hubble constant, indicating the universe's expansion rate. This measurement began in the 1950s via the distance ladder method. Using the CMB is more recent. In 2003, initial CMB calculations suggested a Hubble constant of 72, close to the ladder's estimate. However, the Planck Space Observatory's 2018 CMB data presented a different constant of 67.6, .6, causing a significant discrepancy termed the Hubble tension. The Hubble tension means that scientists aren't sure about how old the universe is. They use different methods to figure this out, and the two methods give different answers. In fact, they're off by about a billion years, which is more than 7% of the entire age of the universe. So there's a big difference, and we're not sure why. One idea is that there might be a mistake in the first method they use, which is called the distance ladder. The distance ladder is like a chain of steps, and each step relies on the one before it. So, if there's a mistake in the first step, it messes up all the others. Even if all the other steps are right, if the first one is wrong, everything gets thrown off. Another possibility is that the issue is not with the math itself, but with the way they're doing it. It's like trying to measure something with a ruler that's not quite accurate. This could be because their model of the universe is missing some important information or has some wrong assumptions. The most exciting possibility is that the second method, which uses the cosmic microwave background, CMB, is the one that's wrong. This would mean that there's something new and unexpected about the universe that we don't understand yet. Scientists have lots of theories, but they haven't tested them to figure out which one is right. Right now, it seems more likely that the problem is with the distance ladder, especially with the chip-eyed stars. They thought these stars were brighter than they actually are, probably because, at very far distances, the light from one sea-fied star could be mixed up with another star. They are testing this idea with better equipment to see if it's true. Our comprehension of the universe continually improves, occasionally revealing previously held beliefs as erroneous, like the old notion of Earth as the center, now debunked. If the distance ladder is flawed, we'll likely learn soon. The James Webb Space Telescope will scrutinize the same targets as the Hubble, but with superior precision. This will clarify whether cheap-eyed stars with a discrepancy, or if the problem lies elsewhere. Once validated, it may unveil thrilling new physics revelations.